Let me show you some of the simplest ways to avoid having damage from rabbits, voles, or mice. Commercial orchards, uh, conventional orchards, will use poison. And what they'll do is they'll drive through the, the aisles and they'll throw about a cup full of poison bait at the base of every fruit tree. Eh, that's not something that that's appealing to me. I don't want to be poisoning critters. Yeah, even though you get damaged, it happens. Here's quite a bit and here's something. There's the older damage and here's the younger damage. So that's a, a rabbit that's been coming back here probably because he stays, he's probably staying underneath the biotope there. And so they're, they tend to eat closer to where they hide. But that's, that's not an alternative that I want to suggest to you to poison them because you don't want any more. A second solution to reducing the damage is to mow in the fall. So we mowed every aisle. We didn't mow as close as we could in the rows because it, this fall it didn't look like there was that many voles. But I see now the pressure has been increasing. They multiply. If you've ever heard of they multiply like rabbits. Well, voles multiply even faster than rabbits. So their population has been growing. But mowing is a good way to avoid and reduce the damage. You see in this kind of low grass in here, there really isn't a whole lot for voles to use or hide in. They definitely won't hide in there. They might come in at night and feed a little bit in there, but what they're looking for is something that's got a little more substance to it that they can really hide in and use to run around in. So you'll find, you'll find their tunnels where they've been running through this. Let's see if I can find some tunnels. So here's a kind of a telltale sign of a vole. So in the taller grass, you'll see these little holes. And if you stick your finger in, it'll actually go in. It's because it's a, it's a runway. So they use those in the tall grass as runways. And then they'll, that's how they move around to find new feeding areas. So mowing is a good way to reduce the available habitat for them. Wait, 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 leave it. Good dog, good dog. Wait, wait, hey, come here. Come here. Bo, come here. Oh, she doesn't often like to share her prize of voles. Very happy with her snack. You can make an area less appealing to voles here we were able to put in some wood chips this fall. Go see that video, putting in wood chips. And voles really don't like running around in wood chips. That's a good thing. So use wood chips around your trees and it will reduce the amount of voles using that area. On some of our smaller trees, we still have tree guards. So this is simply a a drainage pipe that's frozen in there now that with one slit they're easy to make we have several thousand if somebody needs some we have Seth certainly we have for a supply at a really good price and these work well enough when the trees are young but once they reach that size we definitely don't want the guards on because they actually constrict the tree the guard will split a little, but you want you don't want it to constrict the tree. Here's a pear tree with a guard that's definitely snug. And you see, 
one of the things about a guard like this, it's a haven for different caterpillars to come in and, and uh, pupate underneath. It's also a great place. I like leaving guards. And one of the things I'd like to do is, even though they're too big for a guard, I would like to split these guards in half and loosely attach them around the bark because I found for pear trees anyway, it's a great trick that they are the best. These are really good home for earwigs and earwigs. You think, why you want earwigs? Yes, I want earwigs because earwigs are, are known to be one of the best predators against pear scylla. It's an insect that, that sucks on the stems and leaves of pear. There's this around it. You'll have a bunch of earwigs in there in the sea, in season in the summer. And then they will move up the trunk at night and they will eat the, the pear scillas. So observation is also key for that. You, you look and you see what, what's attracted by these guards and then either modify them, remove them, or keep them. But it is a protection uh, while the trees, especially while they're young, but it's not the best that we've found. In this uh, block, these are, this is a newer planting, and these were done really quite well. This is my favorite quarter inch galvanized mesh going around once, not quite, it was, when it was, tree was absolutely young, it would have been two times right around. And the nice thing about mesh like this is it will expand. It will unravel as the tree grows. And you put it right in, ideally right in the ground. And a little detail, but that makes a difference, is if you cut it, and I cut these, you see those little pieces of wire there? That's, that's like, that's really pokey. And a mouse or a vole doesn't want to go underneath that to get to the base of the bark. So it's a good, good way to take, this would be, uh, this is from a three foot, I believe, or is this a two foot, probably a three foot. So this is an inch and uh, a foot and a half of galvanized and it would have been a three foot piece cut in the middle. So the cut, both pieces have a cut. And so that's a way of making it less attractive and it really works well. This was a trick I learned from a, uh, one of the oldest organic orchards in Ontario, uh, Mr. Filsinger. And he said, when we visited his orchard once in a tour, he said, we looked at some guards that were basically around three quarters of the tree. And he said, oh, I put that on 50 years ago when I planted the tree. And I haven't touched it since. And I thought, wow, 50 years that guard has been effective. And I thought, that's the way I like to do it. If I'm going to do it once and I'll do it once for 50 years, that's definitely worth the effort. Once for 50 years, that's definitely worth the effort. The only thing I would change on these, and because we have seen in this block, is when they have deep snow. If we have if we have two feet, two feet of snow would come to about there. Then we've had years where two feet of snow, voles usually operate about six inches below the surface. They don't go on the surface. So six inches below the surface, what we have had is trees girdled here. I'll show you, I think I have a picture. And so I would now use this wire. I would put two feet. So. You take a four foot piece of galvanized and cut it in half. So your guard is up to two feet. That just really reduces the chance that you'll have uh, girdling happening in that range. That does mean you can't have a branch uh, below two feet, but that's all right too. Because even this one is at about a foot and a half, but you see it reaches down. And so there's branches available if the critters want it. This is the best guard to use. A quarter inch galvanized, two feet high preferably. That is really the ultimate tree guard 
for the whole life of that tree, not for a couple of seasons and then take them off, but for the life of the tree and you never have to come back and put it back on again. So this one trick will save you, if you put in an orchard, it will save you dozens, if not hundreds of trees in the lifetime of that orchard. I may as well answer a question that I know I would get as comments. How long do you make this wire mesh? Well, you would have to answer that yourself. Think of this tree, now here's a, an apple tree. Think of it in 50 years, or in 40 years, or in 75 years. Think of it when it's reached maturity and it's an old tree, how big would it get? Ideally, you would want it to go to about Ideally, you'd want it to be completely surrounding the tree, but even 75% around the tree is fine. So think of your tree when it's fully mature and you get this guard going around 75% of it. That's how long you want it. Intrigued? Check out the virtual tour of the permaculture orchard. Have trees already? Pruningcourse.com Subscribe, please! Check out some of the other videos or playlists. There's more to come. Stay tuned.